All right, it's uh, March 2nd and we're gonna hit a raise again. Uh, we did a raise before and we kind of went crazy with it, did some, some multi-dimensional, two-dimensional stuff with it. Uh, let's just trim it back a little bit. This is the general run again program. Uh, and before we hit like the, how the strings and stuff work, I thought maybe we'd go over one of the lab assignments for you. So let's take a look at one of the lab assignments and see which one we're gonna do. I was looking at lab 6B, like let's do that together. So I'm gonna copy all this over and do a comment. And I'll do the comment at the bottom because otherwise I'm gonna just lose it all. <clears throat> so we need to create a program that calcul calculates the average of five rays. Uh, they gave an example to use. So let's just put that shit right up in our code. They said, do that. Let's use what they gave us. So this line is like the instructions of what we're doing. Maybe I'll put that up there underneath my name and my date. Jones, March 2nd, 2022. This is module 6B notes. Actually, this is assignment 6B. I'll do another thing for the 6B notes. And I wanted a piece of that there. So click home and then comment that out. All right, so it says create a program and we're gonna use a, an array of five elements. And then what does it say? Send this array to a function that actually calculates and returns the averages. So let's go ahead and make an array. We got our array here. Uh, let's let's populate it. So one easy way to populate an array is like, especially if you're gonna follow some pattern, is to use a loop. I less than size. We'll say I plus plus. And let's just say data bracket I. Uh, let's say we're gonna we're gonna model y equals two x plus three. So I'm gonna use these. These will be like my i's are like my x points. Maybe I'll call it x since I'm using it as a line. It didn't actually say what function to use. So I'm gonna do that. At least I don't think it did. It did not. It did not say to determine what the the numbers are. So I'm just using a way to populate it. And this is one way to do it. 2x plus 3. That should fill data element x with, why is it giving me a problem? Shit. Well, I'm going to call this another name then. My data. Oh, we got a bracket there. That's what's wrong. That should populate it. I want to make sure it populates it. So let's like make a print function real quick. Uh, void print array. Remember when we do an array, we need to pass not just the array, but also the size. And maybe I'll just call this arg. And we'll come down here and we'll, we'll print out the array down here. Make it real quick. We'll do it before that bool. So we have this incoming array. So we'll do it for int i equals zero, i less than size, i plus plus. Uh, 
cl element i contains the value r of i Actually, since, yeah, I'm going to use that. Uh, and we'll do end line. And maybe at the end, I'll throw in another end line to make it like clear some room on the screen. And now I'll print it out in the main. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it here and see that my print and my array are what I think they are. Uh, my data and size. Oh, I've got double my data, so this needs to be a double. I'm like, what is it tripping out on? And let's see how we're doing. I see some chat. Oh, damn, Adrian's even saying linear is the shit. Not the shit, linear is shit. There's a difference. The shit is, oh shit, close the wrong thing. So let's see, 2x plus 3, I put in 0, I should get 3. If I put in 4, I, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11. That looks like it's working good. So now we need to make a function that calculates and returns the average of an array. Uh, so let's do that. Create another function. It's going to be very similar, but have a different name. And it's returning something. It's returning an average, which is going to be a double. Every time I type double real quick, watch what happens. Oh, I didn't do it this time. The B usually doesn't get hit. Uh, so I'll call this uh, average array average. There we go. I like that. That's it. That, that works for me. So come down here and make something that does that. I'm going to get a little bit lazy, and I know it's going to need a for loop that will not have a C out. I just didn't want to type in the for loop. Uh, so we need to return the average. Let's just make a variable called average or ABG. And we'll, we'll start it off at zero. And so what do we got to do when we're averaging like five elements? Like let's take a look at what this would look like. <clears throat> so an array of five elements. I've got And we did 2x plus 3. And I know it's 3 and it ends in 11. And the slope tells me the change in each square. Uh, so I want to take these and add them up. And so like I, I could have like a subtotal here. And then the average should be the subtotal divided by five, which is the size. So maybe we can treat this average thing over here like an accumulator. Let's make this an accumulator at first. For the for loop. And 
then after the for loop, we'll divide by that size to get the average. That sound good? Yeah. I mean, we could make two different ones, but I don't want it. I, I think that gets a little messy. Uh, so what that means is in here is that average should just keep taking the previous average and adding the next value. And the next value would be R bracket I. And then we said we're going to do average equals subtotal, which in this case was our average, divided by the size. And then we wanted to return that average. And I think I can clean that up, but I want to make sure this works. So I'm going to come up here and just test it. Uh, see how uh, my array is called array average. I'm sending it my data and size. And if I look at this, since these are all evenly spaced, like seven should be the average, just looking at it. Because these two average to seven. These two average to seven. But if we added them all up, three plus five, or oh, hell, seven plus three is 10. Uh, nine and 11 is 20. So 20 plus 10 is 30. And five is 35. I've got 35 over five, which is seven. So we should get seven when this runs. Let's see if that works. It does. Okay, we got that. Uh, so I want to maybe re re refactor this. I could probably, I like, I probably don't need this line. I could probably put this line directly in the return. And like comment out that line. And that should still give me the same thing. And it does. You can see the seven there. So let's make sure we're following what was asked. Send this array to a function that actually calculates and returns the average. We did that. Tell the user what the program does. A lot of you have been doing it and I like it. I think I did it one time and everybody, a lot of people are doing it. Avoid program description. So we'll do that down here. See how this program returns the average of an array values of a double array. That's all we need. Just a little C out that says what it is. So we'll say run program description first. After we make our variables, you want to put all your variables at the top. That should give us what we're looking for. Let's, let's make sure that's looking good. This program returns the average values of the double array. And there we go. What else did she, did I ask? Not she, I. So we did this. 
prompt the user to enter the integer scores. Okay. Now that I know that my function works, I can, I apparently don't need that. But I'm going to copy it before I comment it out. Actually, all I need to really comment out is that line. Uh, what else is it asked? It asked for this, let them do the size. No, we can't, can't do that without vectors. All right. Uh, so I need, I should be more specific. Uh, the average values of a double array of size five. And now I'm going to tell them what they need to do. Because we can't just just put it there. So please enter the five values. Or please enter the five values of the array. I'm not a big fan. A couple of you have done this. X, Y, Z. I think it's ter it's a very sloppy way to do it. People naturally want to hit enter. And this was you like the distance is doing a space bar. Don't do that. Uh, and you can't, I don't even know you can do that since we're going to do it as a loop. Well, you could do that, but then it's a lot harder to assign. Uh, so we're just going to say my data I. Or C out. Well, I'll add another C out prompt. Please enter a value. Now my C in prompt will go here. And we'll put it into my data bracket I. And maybe I'll put a slash N before it. So it looks decent. And that should work. Nope, I got X there. I don't have I. Let's just make sure we did that correctly. If I use, uh, let's see, uh, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90, by the same way that previous one averaged, this should all average to 70. Because that's 70, these two are 70, the outer two are 70. Let's enter those as the values. So 50. Okay, they're all in there and it gave me the average of 70. I see it looking good. So that right there was this prompt right here. I'm going to come up here and put that. Comment. What was the first one? What was the first? Tell the user what the program does. Uh, tell the user what the program does. So that was right here. This is so this was part one. And we did, we did two, so I'll cross that off. Oh, and it specifically said, use a for loop to do this. But create and implement a function with prototype. Double average, double A, we, we create our own. We don't need to match the exact size. <laughs> but, I will go up there and say where I'm putting that. Uh, 
I am implementing that here. That's my implementation and my prototype was right here. So we did those. Just deleting them as I go. Output the results in the main function. I did that, but I, I don't like the way I output it. It's really sloppy. You wouldn't like it if you had an app on your phone that just did this. Like if it just spits out the number like this. And it just says 70 right there. That looks like junk. So you kind of want to make your apps the way you would at least want them to, to look. So here we're going to see out our information. So maybe we'll add some stuff to it. The average value, average of your values is like that. I'm going to comment out print array because I know that my array function is working and it didn't actually ask me to have that printed out. So here I've outputted the results in the main function and asked the user if he wants to run the program again. That's right here. So if I want to run it again, maybe I need to move this shit inside the array, right? I probably don't want to do the program description again. I don't want to do the my data size again. I don't want to redeclare my variables. So what I really need to do is just move this shit inside the array, or the do loop. So I'm going to cut and paste that. I got a comment out five. I'm going to make this a little bit prettier. Don't need that there. I'm going to put it back, but if I were submitting it, I wouldn't have it there. I'm putting it back for like le lecture note purposes. I would delete this line to, for a submission. Oh, maybe not. I probably wouldn't. I would probably leave it there now that I think about it. Uh, just to show you know that I was doing steps along the way to make sure it worked. And I think we've done everything it asks. Let's let's make sure it looks pretty again. I think I want another space before the, between these two lines right here. But other than that, I think I like the way it looks. And I'm, I, and I'm happy with that. What does it look like if I don't have a, a new line between them? Let's see what happens if I don't have that. Oh, I like that better. Oh, I think that looks a lot better. Make sure the run again works. These are the five values of the array. All right. The only thing I want is maybe put a space after that, please enter the five values or before it. So maybe I'll put a new line right here. And that means I can get rid of one of the end lines up in the program description. <clears throat> so this is like working with the arrays, using four loops to do it. 
And now I've made it look pretty. <laughs> I'm, I've been descriptive in my response. Uh, and so I think that's submittable as is. So what do we want to do next? So let's go, let's make a, another. I called that module 6B, maybe I shouldn't have. Create a new project. This will be our lecture notes for today. Just the empty project. Now I'll do run again. So how similar can can our submission be to to your to your assignment? What? The the lab we just did, how like I, I don't intend to copy it entirely, but I will probably look at it while doing it myself. I'm okay with that. And that's why we, we were doing it together. If you copy and paste my lab, my what I did exactly as is, I'm gonna give you a zero. But if you take it and use it as guidelines on what you want to do, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. Excellent question. Because to be honest, that's, this kind of output is what I expect to see. Some of you, let's see, is oh, Maya's not in here anymore. She was. Uh, Maya, like, she's got full flushed out lecture notes. Good stuff. Uh, or not lecture notes, but she got hers is really pretty. A couple of students make theirs phenomenally good looking that make mine look kind of ugly right now. But then there's some students that just do like the bare minimum. Their, their C out is computes average. And they like, they like, how little time can I spend on this assignment? And it makes it look like trash. And we don't want to do trash. So, but yes, you can use, use this as an example. Uh, where was I? Creating a new lecture module. All right, so what are we looking at in module six? Or, or part six, we're looking at strings versus C strings. So what the hell is a C string? Uh, C string is a string that is created with a character array, char array. So like char, uh, my name is, why isn't that working? Why is it got a why is it saying constant? Oh. Didn't make an array. There we go. So let's see kind of like how that works. I'm gonna make a counter. And we'll do uh I'll do a for loop. I less than what? That's a good question. It looks like five, right? Wow, what happened? Oh shit, my screen stopped connecting. I want that to connect. Bastard disconnected.
Okay, so I've got in there, uh, I've got my array. My name is And it looks like it's got this in it. And these are all characters. That's how this is working. So uh, C, this is a C string, because this was a char. So this is called a C string. They, they didn't have strings in, in regular C. Uh, so the only way to make like a sentence was to string characters together which is why they eventually called it string. Uh, but the problem is, is that C didn't know when to stop. So I'm gonna like erase this a little bit and redo my box. Because there's one more character at the end that you don't see. And you got to remember it's there. Let's see, is it? I think it's listed as that. This right here is called the null terminator. So this string, this C string is actually size six. And if I try to treat it as five, if I try to say less than or equal to, well, no, it should still work. If I were trying to populate it with like, so I'm gonna say less than or equal to six. I plus plus. And we can actually just print them out to screen as is. And I can make my character or I can print out uh, my name. I just won't put it. And well, maybe I could put like a underscore. In, oh, I know. No, underscore is better than a star. I'll just put a space. How about that? Well, let's just let that bad boy go. And it prints out my name one at a time. So that's important to know. This is six characters. the five letters, and then the null termination, null terminator. <clears throat> and then the other way to do it obviously would be a string. But if I wanna use a string, I need to include the string library, right? So let's include the string library. Going back to the array, it, is it your name zero to four, not one to five? Say that again. So I, I, I'm remembering for like the arrays, wouldn't it be D, uh, B zero, and then A B one, V B two, I B three, and D V four? Right. Let's see, this is, you're right. This is zero, one, two, three, four. Right, you're right. So I, I should have a five there. Cause there, I'm actually trying to reference a square that's not there. I'm surprised it didn't just grab something blank. What happens if I run that? There we go. Oh, I know it, it, it was printing out the null termination, which doesn't show anything on the screen. You're correct. Uh, so it's not size six, it's size five. 
it's still the way it's written, it looks different than what we would normally put in. For a string, If I want to do, let's see, what do I need for David? I make the string uh, me equals David. And it would do the same thing. So I guess it, it doesn't look different. Uh, one thing that is different is that I need to know how many there are here. Uh, something that you may not be familiar with is we haven't done this. So let me type it here. Uh, for char c strings the size must be known look what happens here when i try to find the size of this if i do me period so what i typed i'll write it over here first off i made string me equals David. And then I did ME period. I start typing that. And or whatever, like I chose me because that's my name here or the name of my string. So the name of your string period, and it brings up a list. You can scroll down and look what's there. Size me dot size. So I will see out me dot size. Let's see out the string too. I'll do that right there. There we go. David, so the, the spaces is the char one. David is size five is the string version. So this is something that we didn't have with strings before and we can have it now. Okay. Uh, so other ways to do this C string, if you don't know the size the, to print out the C string, To print out a C string where you didn't count the size. That's going to be our string in both of them. Do you want to count those letter characters? I don't. So printing out a string where we don't know the size, what we're going to do for a char C string, we'll do a while uh, let me make a, a temporary character. Char temp equals, let's make it the first character in David. And then what we'll do here is while temp does not equal the null operator. C out.
My name is I guess maybe I need to do a, a little, I'll do the counter here. Make that counter. Cause I already got counter zero set up. Make that counter zero. And so I'll say C out counter. And then we'll do, then we got to increment counter. And so with this me dot size, I can do the same thing here without finding the size here. I can do while uh, a, a for loop. I is less than me, less than me dot size. Make sure you put the parentheses at the end of me.size. And I can see out the same thing. And I can treat the string as the same thing. Me bracket I. I don't want an inline. So strings. We can treat this as an array of characters. This is the C++ version. And char, my name is. This is the C version. So that's the big difference in those right now. Oops. Okay. Uh, let's see how that works. I will comment out that line. And maybe we'll put out a, a C out a couple spaces in here. Something be broke. I got junk. Why did I get junk? Do I got the wrong slash? Nope, I don't have the wrong slash either. What am I missing here, Adrian? You know, listening to me. Look at this guy. He's having Mac issues. Let's see my name. Okay. It's, it's the forward slash. So I had that right. Of course, I didn't have it right over here in the notes. I wrote backslash. Oh, 
while counter does not equal that. Nope. <coughs> counter never, oh, temp never equaled that. I never updated temp. That's the problem. I never updated temp. So we're going to change that right here. Put the wrong slash. Like a scrub. <laughs> now we'll do it. There, it ran both of them. Uh, so, I can make it, so this, this was string as in a character array, right? What I did on line 24, here is string as a character array. Oh, yeah, we couldn't hear you, Adrian. Uh, and now, we, now that's a character. What about a string array? Me too is already taken. We'll call it me B. And I will populate it right now. We'll say what I said up there. We'll just leave it at that. We'll sort it up. How do I access these elements? Well, these are, this is like each string is an array. So this is an array of arrays. array of character arrays, which means this is multidimensional. So I'm not going to use like a for loop because these words are each all different sizes. Uh, but I could go like if I wanted to, I could see out me be, I could say the first word, which is zero, the zeroth word. If I wanted to print out the third letter, I would have to do two. This should print the V. Word one is element zero. Letter E is element two. Even better, third letter B is element two. And first word is element zero. That's a better way of saying it. So let's make just sure, make sure that puts out a B. I better like throw in another N line in there. And I got the B. So that's ways to access characters in an array of a string. Uh, so I'm gonna come up here and like maybe refactor this. Do I really need all of this? Maybe I could just say, well, my name is counter up here as temp.
and then just see out my name is counter. And I can get rid of that line and I can actually get rid of chart temp. Well, that's still printed. Maybe save myself a couple, couple lines of code. Do a little bit of refactoring. All right. That still worked. So we refactored once we found what was what was working. <clears throat> Narrowed it down. Uh, if I now knowing this, I could say uh, I'm gonna change this to I. I'll call it K. And then I'm gonna make another counter. And I will also increment counter in here. And so there I printed out that string and I can add to it. Now maybe I'll do an end line first. That sentence is counter characters long. I didn't want to count them, but I can count them. I didn't want to count them by hand, but I can find out how long it is by doing this. Forty-one characters. Good God, that's a lot of characters. Spaces count as characters. Good to know. And you want to make sure, like we like here, I did me b02 to get v. I don't want to go outside my box. Like if I did me b and I do zero and then maybe like eight. There's not eight characters in that first word of B. So let's see what happens if I do that. I need another end line. Broken. So this broke the game. There is no eight element eight in David. <laughs> so you got to be careful with those arrays. You don't want to go out of bounds. That's the lesson there. Be careful that you don't go out of bounds. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to do? Let's take a look at the the homework assignment or no, the lecture notes for this next section. So the Mad Libs, the Mad Libs is what I want to do. And that started there. So I'm going to comment out all this so while we look at it. So they're doing science, the lecture notes had something simpler. They made Mississippi a character array, and it's null terminated. It's got that backslash zero in it, is the null terminator. And then we made California a string and it's a string object. And that's how we got to do the dot. 
we got to do B dots, in this case, B dot size. Okay. So it shows how to print out a C string and doing a C string, the two different versions. <laughs> and then it shows, like we did, accessing character notation. But take a guess at what this two upper does. Any ideas, Lewis? You're the only one here. Uh, like what two upper does? Yeah, it's it, two upper is doing something to this A0. What do you think it's doing? What would A0 be? A is here. So the zeroth element is M. M. Would it just go to the next letter? Like two upper zero, like the next over? Like make it I or like N? I, I would say I, but I guess N would also be valid if it was the alphabet, but we're going on Mississippi, so my guess is I. Okay, so let's take a look and see what happens. Let's run it. So before and after. Oh. Look upper. at that bad boy, it capitalizes it, right? Yeah. So two upper capitalizes a character. And it's good in both C strings and st regular C. <clears throat> and we talked about, we did this ourselves. So we covered that. And we covered doing the dot size. I actually covered a lot of this already. So the parts we haven't covered yet, that we didn't do yet, although this two upper is really good stuff. Uh, get all, guess what else we could do? I'm gonna copy this again. If we go with two lower, guess what that does? Lowercase. Shifts it back to lowercase. So you can change characters without having to like, go through and manually find what they are, as we did here. There was a end line in there somewhere. I don't need to. All right, so let's look at that. Let's comment all that out. We just looked at that, didn't type it up by hand. Do I need that I? I don't need that I. The I was in the wild down there. I'll comment that out. Let's come down and look at the map lips and figure out what the hell is going on here. <clears throat> so we came up with a string. There's a string called my description. It's an array. My description is an array of strings. And it holds the words good, bad, and ugly. And then there's another array of strings called my noun. And it's got an array of nouns. You know what? I think my description is a pretty bad name. Let's change this to my adjective. Because that's what we use to describe nouns. And it says, it says you are a my adjective zero, which is going to grab the first entire word in, in my adjective. So this should say you are a good. And then the first word in my noun zero is gunfighter. It should say you are a good gunfighter. And then it says my adjective zero three. So what am I referencing here? Zero three should be element three is the fourth character. 
So the D, D underscore my noun zero four, four will be the fifth character. So one, two, three, four, five, D I. And then there's underscores between them. And this is my adjective two one. The second word is, remember this is element two is word three. So we're coming over to word three. This is why the indices are a pain in the ass. I really hate that they started with index zero, at least in terms of like figuring out where things go. Computer loves it. Uh, so this is word three, letter two, which is G. Is that seeing out G? This looks like it's, I'm trying to read it without what it's saying. You are a good gunfighter is what that looks like. And then it comes down and says, the while loop has got you are a my, random. If we brought in some random, we talked about randoms on Monday. We're bringing some randoms back. And it does ran three on both of them because string adjective and noun are both the same length. <laughs> so let's see if we're correct in how we're reading it. Reading code without running it is a really important and handy skill to have. Did I read that correctly? I did. Dig. And then it says, you are a ugly sheriff. So this is what Mad Libs are. Mad Libs, I don't know if you've ever, oh, I've got a computer open. Let's just go look up Mad Libs. Oh, like, can we actually buy these? Can you show me an example? All right, so that these are good books and they're really good fun on the road when you don't look like you're in a cell phone dead area and you're with a couple people. You have someone, preferably not the driver, writing in stuff. And the way they look is, let's look at an image. go with one that looks a little bit shorter. Really? Let's see what else looks short. None of them look short. Well, let's just because put one up, it's easy to read. They've got a bunch of blanks, and underneath the blank, they'll say what type of word to put in. <clears throat> so as you're doing it, like you're in the car and you've got this, you go, give me an adjective. And they just got dri done driving by a, a, a sleek cherry red Corvette. So they might say sleek, they might say red, uh, they might say racing. Something that describes the noun, adjectives describe nouns. And it prompts you what to put in. And then you fill them in. That's how Mad Libs work. And so we can make our own Mad Lib. Like we could edit this. So like, let's add some more words to this. Good, bad, ugly. I'm gonna change the size here. Let's go with like seven words for each. 
Good, bad, ugly, awesome. I don't know, wicked. Uh, enormous. Uh, I don't know, short. And my, uh, oh, well, I was talking about driving. Let's say go with a race car driver. Uh, doctor. Oh, 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 professor. I don't know, architect. That's seven. And we can comment this out. And now we're going to go with RAND 7. And we can make our own. Like you are one something something. Uh, too bad you aren't. And then we'll throw in another one. Why don't I just be smart, copy and paste? <clears throat> wow, it shows architect both times. Interesting. So what did I do when I did this? Let me go look at what I did. Do I not have it here? Let's see, I did a, I think I did a fun one in one of these. Is it this one? I wish I had this loaded ahead of time. Now that about it. Right, it might be random array. <clears throat> and if it's not random array, it's array of strings. I know I made a good one. I do it on the magic eight ball. No, I'm disappointed. I can't find it. That was a good array that talked shit about red.
No, that's just my magic eight ball. <laughs> well, we can edit this for our own purposes. Let's see how uh, Professor Hefe is. Am I bold enough to send something like this to my instructor? I don't know. I'm one ugly race car driver. F you, student. Or see, like if you really wanted to make a good story, you could customize it where like you use like my adjective and then there's like my adjective too and create a different set of words. So you can have a pretty good, you can have a lot of fun with this Mad Lib thing. Uh, the good thing I was pointing out is we can use brands in, in, in stuff. And this is a way of creating maps. And I think that covers everything I really wanted to show today. Uh, actually, let's show one more thing. Where was my... It's up here. Uh, my string. I want to show what happens if you just see out. Not that one. That's not the one I wanted. I want the string arrays. This one. What happens if I just see out me B? It sends the address of the first character. So let's. Talk about this over here. Me B points to. David is. Professor Hefe. And when I do C out me B, the result is the address in memory of David. So that's important to know. And I think we did this on the other one. But I wanted to point it out again, if you try to just see out an entire array, it's going to send you the address of the first element. See out a whole array, we'll do this every time. Yields addresses in hexadecimal. Now we can find out what the, like, that's not readable to me. So maybe I, I want to cast it as an integer. <laughs> and now it at least gives me an integer value for it. Can I make it print out the character? See, maybe it's been a while. I don't, that's not how you do it. Maybe like that.
What's dereference? Shit. Dereference. Address in C++. <clears throat> I hate dereferencing. Maybe it's I'm, I'm doing it in the wrong spot. Oh, I am doing it in this wrong spot. The asterisk after it makes it a pointer. The asterisk before it should. It doesn't like that either. Oh, since it's an address, I got to dereference the address. I don't know. We'll look at that more when we get to pointers. Uh, and I think about it some more. You don't, I don't use it that often, so it's not fresh in my memory, which is a terrible thing to have in my lecture notes right now, but still is what it is. We'll comment that out. Isn't and the, I think that's it for the day. This is the, I, I forgot what they're called. Uh, the, the extractors. In it. Oh, there we go. It's, it's called dereferencing. What you're doing is extracting the data from it. <clears throat> oh. I put the address in the wrong spot. I'm betting that's it. I put it after, let's put it before. Nope. I swear to God, it's one of these. There we go. I think I had that commented. I thought it. I thought it was the asterisk. So putting, when you have just the address and asterisk before it will dereference. So, and what that means is what's happening here is it's it sends the address, which is sending by reference. You're referring to where the data is stored, an asterisk before it will different reference or retrieve the data. Uh, but more on that later. It's not in chapter module six stuff. We'll hit on that when we get to pointers and that's in vectors and that's later on. So maybe I'll put that in my lecture notes over here. I gotta make them pop back up though. So to retrieve the data, We can dereference what was sent. We had me be, and now we're going to add the asterisk star. I don't like the way that turned out. Put an asterisk before it. <clears throat> I 
quit doing that. All right, do we have any questions? None for me. All right, we will call that a wrap. I don't know if Adrian wants, if you want, you're gonna do a workshop right now or if you're just done, you call it quits. He's probably still having mic issues. Uh, I just can you, can you hear me now? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm down to host like a little workshop for the last thirty minutes. I'm actually working with the student right now too. So, oh, okay. I don't, I don't know, Louis. Do you need, you want a workshop right now? It's up to you no, guys. I I I don't need a workshop right now. All right, yeah. we'll call we'll, it quits. We'll call it. Right. We'll uh, tap out. I, I just wanted to say, uh, Hefe, that I I haven't mentioned it, but you call me Louis. Uh, my my name's pronounced Luis. Say it again. Luis. Luis. Okay. okay. I I just want to like it doesn't bother me, but. Well, no, I, I'm glad you pointed out. I don't want to be an ass hat for fucking eighteen weeks. Luis. Okay, I can do that. All right. All right. See you next week. Yeah, I can see why. I think I'm glad that doesn't bother you because there are two common ways of saying that, Lewis and yeah. Louise. Uh, I guess Lewis tends to have a O in it, doesn't it? L O U I S. Yeah, Lewis usually has an O, or it can be E W. I would say my name is Lise, which is one syllable, but a lot of people have trouble saying it in one syllable, so I'm okay with Louise. Lise works like fleece, but without the F. Yeah. Lease. Lease, 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 lease. All right, I can do that. All right. Thank, thank you for letting me know. Okay. See you next week. Cool. All right.